what happens when earth beneath the ocean starts moving can a single earthquake in russia trigger waves across the whole of pacific ocean and is the pacific ring of fire waking up again this time our world has just seen something so big that we are labeling it as monster quack and it has not just affected one part of earth rather the whole of the pacific ocean i am talking about the 8.8 magnitude earthquake that came near kamchatka peninsula in east of russia and that has triggered off tsunami in the all countries associated in and around the pacific ocean Hello everyone welcome to Vajiram and Ravi's flash news my name is Shubhangi Singh and today we are not just going to talk about this monster quack but also we are going to look into that how earthquakes trigger tsunami and what has been the expanse of effect that we are looking at right now so when we talk about this particular earthquake this happened on July 30th in the early hours that was around 8:25 am and initially the magnitude that came out was somewhere around 8 but later it was revised and it is one of the most deadliest earthquakes in terms of magnitude that we have seen that is 8.8 that is why it is also being called the monster quake the location of the epicenter was very close to the kamchatka peninsula it was right there and this earthquake was a shallow one that means the depth of the epicenter was only 19.3 km which is ideal for tsunami generation how it is ideal for tsunami generation we will be just talking about it now when we are talking about earthquakes and tsunamis we fundamentally need to understand that how tsunamis work so when we talk about tsunamis you have to understand they are not tidal waves because tidal waves are generated because of the gravitational pull of both sun and moon here this is not the reason these are basically displacement waves and they are created by displacement of plates so whenever there is some sort of displacement in earth's crust an energy is released and because of that energy there is an upward wave that is created now once that upward wave is created you have to understand that waves move outward in all directions and the direction can be any but the speed goes up to almost 500 miles per hour but at the same time when we are talking about the height of the waves they are just like the regular height because when they are away from the shore so the depth because of the depth presence there is no as such height that these waves gain but as soon as they start moving towards the shore you will find that these will start gaining height and they have a lot of momentum because of water and this is when we call it tsunami because they gain height up to 100 meters so i just started with the very example that if there is any sort of displacement that we saw just here which usually happens when there is an earthquake so if there is an earthquake this upward wave can be easily created the usual waves are created because of wind because of the friction but here the case is absolutely different so because the depth of this earthquake the epicenter of this earthquake was comparatively shallow the displacement occurred and tsunami generation happened now when we talk about this particular earthquake and the tsunami that was generated we have to understand in this case immediate impact tsunami waves of 3 to 4 meters what struck in kuril islands then there was severe kurilis then it experienced this region experienced ship damage there was port flooding and evacuations this happened immediately but after the earthquake tsunami generation also happened and it went across the pacific ocean so for this very earthquake it had all the facilitation for generation of tsunami it was ideal why because 
whenever there is large underwater earthquakes they they can easily cause tsunami second shallow depth that was there sudden vertical sea floor shift this sudden vertical sea floor shift usually happens in subduction zone and if we talk about the location of this earthquake you will find it lies at the subduction zone that is between pacific plate and oak tox plate subduction zone is the zone where two plates one oceanic and one continental are colliding they are at a convergent boundary they are going towards each other and this is where the oceanic plate submerges subducts inside the continental plate so in this place pacific plate was subducting beneath oktox plate and the sudden vertical thrust the sudden vertical movement displaced a huge water volume because of which high tsunami waves went across the pacific ocean and they were so quick i'll show you right here that within span of hours kamchatka and directly it spread across across the pacific ocean it went ahead and hit alaska it went ahead and hit californian coast it went ahead and affected hawaii regions then we have islands over here and furthermore south american coast as well so you can see within the span of 20 hours all the coasts have been hit and as we speak now all these coasts have already seen tsunami thankfully the destruction has been less because of the well in time trigger alarms evacuations that have taken place now when we talk about this understanding that how it goes across we can see this tsunami nature of this specific tsunami it was fast in deep sea up to 800 km per hour and it went ahead near shores and it occurred in series that means danger persisted for hours even after 20 hours when almost these coasts that we have just seen in the video that have been struck we have to understand there will be occurrence that means there will be sequences when these waves will keep hitting so the danger remains only region as of now russian region has called off the trigger alarm and evacuations and everything however other regions still remain on alert and this was seen by whole of the specific be it japan be it hawaii be it alaska tonga taiwan california mexico all of these regions and this had the repetition of 2011 tsunami in japan where again fukushima plant was in danger and it was evacuated even radioactive water discharge has been halted in japan furthermore the earthquake was so big that the series of aftershocks up to magnitude of 6.9 have been seen and experts have said ki they can expect m7.5 aftershock in coming weeks that means these regions particularly the kamchatka peninsula i'm talking about the boundary between oak tox and pacific plate these are the regions where we can expect the aftershocks in coming days as well now why is this region when we are talking about this whole region of pacific it is prone to earthquakes and tsunamis because this is not the first time that we are hearing something big coming from here it was in 2011 as well so when we talk about this region we have to understand that every day almost 20 to 30 earthquakes happen the major ones and if you place them you will find it concentrated in this very region now this is a 40 km horseshoe shaped area which is known for its seismic activity because in center lies the pacific plate and it is surrounded by other plates so basically these regions are plate boundaries and as they are plate boundaries they are more prone to seismic activities such as volcanism such as earthquake as well as tsunamis so these this is the region which accounts for 90% of global earthquakes 75% of active volcanoes that we see across the globe and that is why it is duly named as the pacific ring of fire here we find the tectonic plate boundary 
which is responsible for presence of active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters and much more disasters that we can expect. And that is why it is a spot for seismic activity. And Kamchatka Peninsula lies in the very same region. When we look at this region, this is the Kamchatka Peninsula that we are talking about. And it lies on the boundary of Pacific and Oktoks Plate. Pacific plates move towards subduction in Oktoks Plate has resulted in extreme friction and stress buildup, which is the reason of violent earthquakes that keep coming here. And it is a place which is home to frequent volcanic eruptions as well. When we talk about volcanic mountains such as Klaivuchevoskoy, they have seen frequent eruptions and there has been a recent eruption just after this 8.8 .8 monster quack. Now, the global examples that we have such incidents occurring past when we talk about 2004 earthquake which had the epicenter in Indian Ocean near Sumatra and 2011 Tohoku in Japan both have resulted in disastrous tsunamis. It is a wake up call for all of us for the global order to focus on better systems so that the disaster management can go ahead and save lives in situation where nature's fury wipes it all. That was all from my side. Thank you so much.